Steve again, with another much delayed and truncated video. This was a pike and shot game, based on the Thirty Years' War Battle of Whitstock, which took place in 1636. We played the game at the beginning of May, but my household was attacked by the Covid virus before I could edit the footage. We're okay now, though it was a bit rough for a while. Whitstock was what a wargamer would call a meeting engagement with an off-table flank march. The Swedes, recovering from the disasters of Lutzen and Nordlingen, played a blinder, with their divided force trapping the imperialists with an almost perfect pincer movement. In this clip, the Scots Brigade are about to attempt forming for Salmon to pepper the papish hordes. Right, Steve. So I've disordered cavalry here. Mm. Oh, the supports are fine. Yes. You have two units of cavalry on the right flank are fine. Right. Uh, and you've got, uh, not Mackay's, is it? It's the other one, Monroe's in the front. Uh huh. Right. Well, the offer, the, 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 my first order will be to, to Colonel um, Monroe to advance towards the enemy cavalry in the centre. Um, Don't forget the, um, the the rules, our drill rules. Salve. Well, it, the, the, this is the doctrine, isn't it? it it's, it's as an infantry commander, would I be permitted to go on to, on still to the offensive and move towards enemy cavalry, or does, does this doctrine kick in because I'm near to the enemy? In other words, do I have to resort? But you've got to work out. You know that you're going to need two orders. Yeah. Time for two orders to form up properly. Yeah. And Do it, okay. so you mm. can take the gamble that you get three, which would be yeah. one move, then set for Salvi at point blank range. Yeah. Or set now. Yeah. No brainer. It's what, set now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I better do it. I've got to do it now. Well, it's a relatively safe distance after last time disaster. So I'll order the Salve, Steve. Yeah. Into salve. Okay. Oh, six. There are eight, are they? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, do it. Hey. hey. <laughs> right. So you've got five, uh, four dice for yep. the, combining the two wings. Yep. Five because it comes a large unit. Six because it's first fire. It's unobscured, and you're at uh, 11 inches. 11 inches? So you don't get the, uh, the extra one for um, close range. Okay. Just forced it, I think. Forced it. Mm. Six dice needing fours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dave. Give fire. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, no. Four hits, but no sixes. Unfortunately for Dave, his opponent, Paul, saved everything. Fortunately, the Swedish reinforcements are now arriving. Right, the Swedish commander, and right. whoever he may happen to have brought with him, enters here. Oh, is that you, Colin? Oh. Uh, I've been rolling movement dice for Colin's command at the end of each of the Swedish turn, and I've rolled double one, double one, one two. <laughs> so in fact, they've been dressed in them back again. What the Swedish commander had brought with him turned out to be the entirety of the native Swedish cavalry led by the Hakapelita, the horrible Finnish Hakapels. On the other side of the battlefield, the imperialist reinforcements were arriving. So shall we bring those on last, Conrad? I think we should. They're, they're full cavalry, one raw foot. Uh, you've got a, a nice target with Dave's cavalry there. The imperialists were in a quandary about where to deploy their reserves 
as they were under pressure along the whole line, and the mass of the Swedish cavalry was threatening to roll up that flank. Um, if you want to take up cavalry defensive positions, you can do that on initiative. Yeah. So they're, they're form a hedgehog there then. What I'm saying is, because yeah, he's within right. 12 inches, he can only go in his front or his rear quarter. Yeah, but, yeah. Not, yeah. but yeah. the whole of your unit was in his front quarter. Yeah. So if he could yeah. old enough, he could just swing around and hit oh. them on the road. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah. 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 Agree. Mm. Next. That last clip was a debate about how hedgehogs work. It always happens whenever we play these rules. We like black powder. We like the ability to get lots of troops out and finish a game, but the Pike and Shot published version are rank, rotten rubbish. As all of the troops arrived on the table, the battle started to look like one of the contemporary battlefield paintings by someone like Peter Snares, which indicates every phase of the battle happening at the same time. And I have to say, running this game with three players aside, it very often felt like that. The next foot are the... That's these, right? Can I have a look? The first ones on the left are Austrians. They are, they're just going to shoot, so they stay there. Right? The next one... Can I have a look at... Can they put the camera on, please, so I can see where the Italian... Yeah. That's the Austrians. Yeah. Now, can I move on to see where they tell? I'm getting blurred. The Italians will move up to take station between my Austrians and the uh, allies on the, uh, and my men on the hill. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. After much hard fighting on the imperialist right flank, the Swedish enveloping movement started to pay dividends and the cavalry started to roll up that flank. Not long after this, we broke for lunch. When we came back, I promise you there was a hard fought, brilliant battle with some fantastic generalship and amazing dice rolling and very spectacular movements. But this buffoon forgot to switch the camera back on. We'll continue to play pike and shot games, but we're now applying so many house rules that I might as well scrap it, go back to Black Powder 2 and write our own set. We don't play the ECW, we play 30 Years War, but even in the ECW, I don't know where some of the concepts have come from in this book. Still, the core system gives a great game and we're going to persist with it. See you next time.